Even though my handlers monitored every movement I made and conversation I had, I guess I never seriously considered that my hotel rooms might be bugged. I mean, I did. But because I was alone in my room and therefore not speaking out loud, and because I couldn't make any outside calls and there's no internet, and they knew what was on TV, and they'd searched me for any electronics at the airport when I landed and knew I had no computer or other communication devices, I'd more or less dismissed the thought. Why would they bother? I was barely in my room anyway, and when I was, I did little more than sleep or read or get dressed or undressed. Or, if in room 21028, at the Hotel Corio, watch the BBC. Except for that one afternoon. After I refused to visit the Sinchon Museum of American War Atrocities, we'd arrived back in Pyongyang earlier than expected. Older Handler did her best to reconfigure our itinerary, but our next activity, enjoy draft beer at Paradise Bar, was less fun than expected. We were the only patrons in the dark, freezing establishment, and my crew was riveted to the tiny television hung high above and behind me that was showing a Chinese drama with Korean subtitles that apparently they all loved. When their show concluded, I asked if we could go back to the hotel. More people at night, older handler assured me. Whatever, I didn't say, and we rolled. Ensconced back in my, by now it's so familiar it almost feels like home except I'd kill myself if it was, room at the choreo. I'm lying on my bed, slightly buzzed, with an unexpected and glorious hour all to myself during the daytime to kill. I don't feel like watching the BBC or reading or learning more vocabulary words, so I take a seat in my room's lounge to stare outside. I'm putting my earphones in to listen to music on my iPhone when it strikes me for the first time since arriving in NOCO that if I take my earphones off, I can play music aloud. I couldn't believe I hadn't thought of this sooner. And even better, I'll do yoga. I haven't exercised since arriving. No wonder I'm so sad. And yoga will be good for me. My mind could use a break. I didn't bring workout clothes with me, so I stripped down to my bra and underpants. I select the yoga mix I've created, prop my iPhone up against the wall, hit play, careful, it's not too loud, and start downward dogging my way to bliss. But I'm not even halfway through my first sun salutation when the door to my room bangs open and someone, perhaps a maid, bursts in. Huh, maybe my room is bugged. Or who fucking knows? I jump up, staring at her with my mouth agape. Momentarily befuddled, I have no idea what to say. I'm exercising, I somehow manage. Is the music too loud? But I know full well I'm the only one on my floor to hear it. She'd walked in on me while I was more or less naked, folded over in a V. So unless she's familiar with yoga, or was, in the moments leading up to this intrusion, spying, she must be as flummoxed as I. She says something I don't quite catch and leaves my room, closing the door behind her. I'm left wondering, among other things, of course, how she even got my door open so quickly when I can barely open it half the time using my key. I'm tempted to keep practicing yoga, if for no other reason than to see what they'll do, but I'm tired, nay, exhausted, from all my double thinking. Inner peace in the presence of the omnipresent dear great dead leaders, it seems, is simply not possible, for me at least. Nevertheless, I allow myself one millisecond to think that indeed, if I'm not being paranoid, then they have just let it be known. As a guest in their country, yoga is just one more thing I'm not allowed to do. And with that, I turn off the music, put my clothes back on, and resume staring outside. Speech on. Four minutes. Take picture. Button.